Once upon a time in the verse, a massive space whale named Galacticus swam through the vast expanse, its song echoing through the cosmos. It was said that those who heard its song were filled with a sense of wonder, and even the bravest pilots would pause to marvel at its majestic presence. Legend has it that Galactica's song could guide lost travellers back home, a comforting beacon amidst the endless stars. <laughs> that was quite a story. Hello, citizens. I'm Geek Domo, here to guide you through the exciting world of Wingman AI version 1.13b1, a groundbreaking tool for Star Citizen. Wingman AI is distinct from tools like Voice Attack. It offers a dynamic way to interact with Star Citizen, connecting to AI services like OpenAI or Azure, creating a more natural conversation than static voice packs. I'm going to show you how easy it is to set it up and install it and customize it so it works with Star Citizen right off the bat. One thing to note, it is fully compliant with Star Citizen's terms of service. Wingman AI integrates voice to AI communications into the game without interfering with the gameplay. It's like a fancy macro tool. It's also a very invaluable tool, especially for those with accessibility needs. There's some really exciting discussions happening in the ShipBit Discord about integrating Wingman AI with a local large language model server for enhanced privacy and customization. I'll keep you in the loop on how that's going. Today, however, we're gonna cover installing Wingman AI, connecting all the AI APIs, setting up text-to-speech profiles, and adding a mod for profitable cargo hauling. Are you ready to enhance your Star Citizen experience with Wingman AI? Let's get started. All right, step one, you're going to need to get the Wingman AI current release, which is 1.1.3b1. The place you're going to get it is GitHub. I'll have a link in the description below, but it's also right here. Okay, the file you're going to want is right here, Wingman AI Core, which is the zip file. Just click that and download. This is open source, so at some point, if you want to fiddle with it and actually develop your own, you can. They're providing the source code free of charge right here. Okay, another thing you're going to probably want is Visual Studio. You're going to have to have a way to edit a YAML file, .yaml file, which is a Python file. And the best one to do that with is Visual Studio, which is free from Microsoft. You could also use Notepad++ or any other kind of editor that you feel comfortable with. But for me, the Visual Studio... Uh, is the best way for me to edit the YAML file. You can get it by just going to Google and looking for Visual Studio Code. When you click on the link, you're going to go to the community section, unless you're professional or enterprise, which are paid. This one is free. Click on the free download. Once it's finished downloading, you're going to open it up and do the setup for it. All you have to do is run it, and you'll come to a screen like this. In here, you're going to see a button that has modify, launch, or more. Just go to modify. The only one you really need is the Python development. I have a couple of these other ones checked because I do a lot of AI stuff. But for right now, all you really need is the Python development one checked. Bottom right, you'll have a button that says install. And it will download all of the pieces of software that you need to develop Python. Now that we've downloaded Wingman AI and we have our software to edit the YAML file, the next thing we need are the API keys from OpenAI so that we can actually start using it. So you're just going to go to openai.com and you're going to create an account if you don't have one. If you do, just go ahead and log in. Once you log in, you're presented with two things, ChatGPT and API. We're not going to go to ChatGPT even though we are doing text-to-speech. At this point, we don't care about this. We're going to go to the API part. So click on the API side. The thing we're going for is on the left side, there's like a little pop-open toolbar. We're going to go up to this. Go down to API keys. Click on that. You're going to create a new secret key. Okay, this is really important. You can create as many of these keys as you want, like a thousand of them if you want. It doesn't really matter. But every key you create, when you create the key, make sure you copy that key down locally, like in a text file or something. Okay, so let's create a key. What you're going to do is you're going to click create new key. And we're going to call it uh, wingman instruction video create the secret key it has created the key for wingman instruction remember make sure you copy this key down once you hit done you're only going to be able to see the first couple letters of each one of these parts of the key you're not going to be able to see the whole key so hit copy and then hit done okay, now i'm just going to come over here to notepad plus plus and then i'm going to save it in here and there we go this is just for my own personal records 
This isn't required by the software at all, but I just want to make sure I have a place that it's saved. So just in case if I lose it or I close the program, crash it, whatever, I have a way to get my key back. Now you have your API key all sorted. Next thing you need to do is get a subscription because this is not a free service. Go down to settings, then go to billing. Here you're going to want to set up a payment plan. Up at the top, you can set your payment method, credit card, whatever you want to use. And you could turn auto recharge off. With OpenAI, it's pay as you go. So what would happen is at some point it would just stop working and like, oh, I have to go check my, my balance. And you're not going to run up some crazy big bill. So if you want to put in $10 in here or $50 in here or whatever it is you want to put in here, it will then take money away as needed. Now in this Wingman AI directory that you unzipped, you're going to have two files. There's going to be a folder called internal and one called Wingman AI Core EXE. That's what we're going to want to run. Have your OpenAI API key ready because once you run this, it's going to ask for it. So go ahead and hit Wingman AI Core EXE and start it. Paste it in there. Once you paste it in, hit OK. And there you go. Now before you even go into Star Citizen to try it out, I know you're excited. I do all of my setups outside of Star Citizen. I get it pretty much tweaked and set up exactly how I want before I even go into the game. Because you really don't even need the game running at this point. You can do all your setup outside on the desktop. You're just going to need one thing, a microphone. To get this started, just come down here and hit the run button. And it'll come up on the screen and say, Wingman is now listening for commands. Press stop to stop listening. Let's go over the UI here a little bit before we get started. And over here, this is your settings, and this will show your API key in here. Now, what's nice is they just added this feature where it's all scrambled, or just stars. So that if you're a streamer and you're trying to show people how this works, you can show this screen and everything's obfuscated and nobody will be able to tell what's going on. Here's where you can enable auto run. Just click on this little right here, and that will automatically start up every time you start the program. So instead of hitting this button down here, you can do that. This part right here is important. This is your push to talk key. Each one of these lines, the end line, the delete line, and the up line, each one of these keys are for a different wingman. And each wingman can be completely configured however you want. I'm gonna show you how to customize it as we go here. So you're gonna hit the end key to talk to the board computer. The board computer is your ship's computer. It does all the controls for your ship. If you want to raise your landing gear, turn your lights on, that's done through the board computer. So that's the end key. The delete key talks to air traffic control. The board computer can do that for you. It can talk to air traffic control. So you don't need to directly, but if you want to and add a little flavor, you can do that. The air traffic control is set up to be very terse and sort of like busy sounding, so it doesn't really want to mess around. It'll just give you the basic Okay, you're free to take off or whatever. Up is Starhead, and that's ShipBit's way to communicate with, I believe, some sort of API that kind of gets the data for shipping and trucking. While I love this software, it's at this point not that great, and I'm going to show you how to install a mod later on, which is a lot better than the Starhead. Just for right now, to try it out to make sure it's working, what you want to do is talk to the board computer. So to do that, you just hold the end key down on your keyboard and talk to it. Hello, computer. How are you doing today? I'm functioning optimally. Thank you. How can I assist you today? I'm going to leave all of the pauses in so that you can see the turnaround time from speaking to it to its reply. The voice that they have set by default to me is really kind of bland sounding. She doesn't really have a personality. So I'm going to show you how to change that. So now that we've verified that it actually functions, it does work. I can speak to the board computer. I could also speak with ATC or the Starhead. But we do know it works. My microphone is working. It is going out to OpenAI. It is transcribing what I have said. Hello, computer. How are you doing today? It's transcribed that. It is replied back with OpenAI's reply. I'm functioning optimally. Thank you. How can I assist you today? And it's also made the round trip by sending that off to a text-to-speech engine, which turned that text into a voice to speak back to us. The round trip is working and we're good to go. So now if you were ready and you just want to jump right into Star Citizen, go for it. You can just open up Star Citizen and start using it right now. But I kind of feel that a lot of you out there might want to customize this a little bit and make it more like something you would want to talk to. So let's go into that part now. I had you earlier download the Visual Studio Code software package. So now what we're going to do is open up the YAML file. Inside the directory for Wingman AI Core, there's going to be a new folder now called configs that wasn't there before. Here's the config file we're going to be editing, configs YAML. 
First off, let's go over a bit of an orientation on this file and I'll show you where everything is. The reason I wanted to use Visual Studio for this is because YAML files that I've come to learn are extremely sensitive to spacing. If I were to take and add a space right here that is highlighted saying something's changed, probably not going to break anything. However, now that I've deleted this space and this line now, the S is not lined up with the T here and the blue here, all the blue lines is not lined up. You notice these lines now are red. So it's telling me this won't work. If I were to try to run this config file without changing this back, it's going to crash the program. And now that I put it back, all of these are in line again, it's going to work. That's why I wanted to use this program. If you use something like Notepad++, while it doesn't really affect the file, if you make minor changes to it, if you have a space off just a little bit, it might break the file and it will no longer work. So go ahead and get this Visual Studio. It's free. It's from Microsoft. It's safe. And you can edit your YAML file in here. Right off the bat, up on top, if you change this debug mode to true, when the wingman replies back to you, it'll get a little bit of more data. It'll tell you the turnaround time, like how many seconds it took for it to reach OpenAI and how many seconds it took for it to come back. If something's broken in there, it's a really good way to sort of debug it and figure out what's broken. The next thing down here, this is a TTS provider. TTS stands for text to speech. There are quite a few of them here. You can use OpenAIs, you can use Edge TTS, Eleven Labs, and Azure. I'll just tell you right off the bat, Azure right now is still in early development for this program, so I would recommend probably not using Azure unless you're really a Azure developer currently, or you know a lot about Azure, then you can go ahead and use that. It does have a benefit to where it is much faster for replying than any of the other ones. So if you're looking for speed, you want a really quick turnaround, use Azure. However, it does have a cost and it is also very complicated to set up from what I've been told. So we're going to focus mostly on OpenAI and 11 Labs. Edge TTS is the one from Windows or Microsoft, and it's okay. Uh, I just find that it is very robotic-y sounding, and I really don't end up using it all that often. My preferred one is 11 Labs, but we haven't talked about how to set that up yet. We will in a little bit because we're going to come back and do all those changes in here. But for now, let's continue on with the setup of the file, and then I'll come back and we'll change that, and I'll show you how to set up your 11 Labs API as well. So for now, we'll leave it alone. The next one down here is SST, which is speech to text provider. This is set for OpenAI. Might as well leave that alone. These are new. Conversation provider and summarize provider are both new. By default, they're set for OpenAI. Go ahead and leave them alone because I don't know if changing it to Azure is that important. This next section is cost control, and we'll talk more about costs in a little bit. At the end of the video, I'm going to go over how to mitigate your costs and sort of save some money. One of the ways to do that is in here, although I've changed it in here and I haven't really noticed anything significant in pricing, so your mileage may vary. Next section is sound settings. Here you can change the sound. You can add effects like radio or robot. I use 11 Labs, so I don't even bother messing with these. If you do want to use these with 11 Labs, it will work. However, it will increase the time to reply a little bit, which with 11 labs, you're going to see the time to reply is a little long, but I like it so much, I don't care. Down here is where you change the OpenAI's text-to-speech voice. So up here, if you have OpenAI selected for text-to-speech provider, down here is where you'll change it to a different voice. There aren't a lot of voices there. So as you can see, there's Nova, Alloy, Echo, Fable, Onyx, and Shimmer. Uh, if you go to the OpenAI's webpage and look for text-to-speech voices, listen to each one and figure out which one you like the best. Personally, I don't really like any of them, so that's why I use 11 Labs. Next section is Edge Text-to-Speech. Edge Text-to-Speech is free and faster than the default OpenAI, but it is not as good in terms of quality. Only use a feature TTS provider is set to Edge TTS above. So once again, these are your global settings up here, and down here is where you can change the individual settings. So if you want to use Edge TTS, uh, you can change it here. Next up is 11 Labs, and we're going to talk about how to set up 11 Labs a little bit later. So now this is the Wingman configuration. This is where we're going to configure the Wingman. So this is the board computer. As you see, that's what's called here. And on the main UI, you'll see board computer. And down here, you can set what key you want. If you don't want to use the end key and you want to use another function key or something, you would set that key here. You can add the effects here if you'd like. And then down here is the context. 
So next, I'm going to show you guys, after we go through this file, I'm going to show you how to change the context. This is where you tell it how it behaves. And down here, this is where you're going to set what each key does. So currently, if you want to hit uh, your, I don't know, jump drive, it's the B key. Sometimes uh, Cloud Imperium games will change that key to something else. If they do, you would just come in here and change it to whatever the new key is. And it also has a hold function, which is really nice because some of these keys, it's not just a tap, but it's you have to hold it down for a little while. This way you can set exactly how long this program will hold that key down. And if you go through here, you'll see they have put in a ton of uh, the key bindings that are already in Star Citizen. They've already put them in here, which is really great. Now this is the air traffic control. Now you notice there's not much in here. Uh, it does have a couple things, request landing permission and request departure. It has the keys already set for that. But you notice that it is already set up in here with this sort of context. Down here is the Starhead section and it's at the bottom. I don't really use Starhead. We're gonna show you in a minute how to set up the community version of Starhead, which I think is awesome and much better. Um, so this one is all right. But one of the problems with it is it does use GPT-4, the Starhead version. And so that's expensive. And we'll talk more about cost a little bit later. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you how to set up Eleven Labs. Now we're on the Eleven Labs website. If you're not familiar, Eleven Labs is an amazing generative voice AI engine that will take the file inputs from Wingman AI. It'll take the text. It'll take that text and turn it around and reply back with the voice that you pick. It is extremely powerful and way better than any of the other voices that are available right now. However, it does also have a cost. And of all the things we've talked about so far today, the cost with this is much higher than some of the other ones. I want you to keep that into account. And once again, at the end of the video, we're going to go over all the costs and what things are going to cost you effectively when you use this software. You've created your account and you've logged in. What you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to go to your subscription page. The subscription page is where you will pick a subscription. I picked this one here, the creator one. It's $22 a month normally. Right now it's $11 a month when you first sign up. So it's $11 for the first month, $22 a month after that. And while yes, that's expensive, I do enjoy this very much. And so it's a lot of fun to me. If you want, and you don't care about how much it's going to cost you, because I know some of you Star Citizen people are whales, then you can just click this right here, enable usage base. And what this will do is it will automatically just charge you over and above what you've used. Now, I have used this thing a ton. So here's an example. I have currently used 29,000 characters of my 109,000 that I get every month. So not that bad. So the next thing you're going to want to do is get your API key. And how you do that is just go to your profile, and it will show your API key right here. Once you have your API key, then what you're gonna do is go back to Wingman and we'll go there next. But before we go there, let's look at what this thing can actually do. I'm gonna to go to speech synthesis and show you how this works. I currently have Emily picked a pleasant teen voice. I really love Wingman AI. Isn't it just the best? There's also other voices. There is, well, let's pick Joe. Joe's a great name for a guy. I really love Wingman AI. Isn't it just the best? So what I love about it is it has these awesome inflections in their voices and it has nice natural pausing. It really sounds like you're talking to a real person other than like a uh, TikTok video robot. Up here at the top, they have something called voice library. And this is where you can come in and figure out the voice you want. What do you want your AI to sound like? What do you want your Wingman to sound like? Um, maybe you want it to sound uh, more silly or cheerful. Um, we can go with, I don't know, how about Dara? Loud and intense, middle-aged American male. Let's see what he sounds like. The world is round and the place which may seem like the end may also be the beginning. Yep, pretty intense. How about Astrid? I have often regretted my speech, never my silence. There's Karen, a whiny lady. I love how they call it Karen. Okay, let's listen to Karen. She's going to want to speak to a manager, I guarantee it. God has given you one face and you make yourself another. I, I could, I would, my skin would crawl if that was my AI. So once you've picked a voice that you really like, let's go with Dylan for right now. What you do is you click add to voice lab and go back to your voice lab. And then up here at the top of the each one of these little cards, Dylan, there's the ID. 
So we're going to grab that ID just by clicking on it and it copies it. And then we're going to use that in the config YAML file right now. Back in my config YAML file now. And uh, here you can see that I've already changed this to say 11 labs for my TTS. All the rest stay just the same, open AI all the way down. Now scrolling down to my section down here, we are going to change this here to be turbo. And they even kindly enough put all of the names up here for you so I don't have to know what it's looking for. It's looking for 11 turbo v2 because that's the one I like. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put it down here. There we go. Down here, I'm going to grab that voice ID that we grabbed for Dylan, which is right here. And we're going to paste that. Everything else is staying the same for right now for the 11 labs section. So now we want to make our wingman sound more custom, more something that we would want to talk to. Now I am Geek Domo and I go by Domo either colloquially or my friends. My mom calls me Domo, that kind of thing. I want my AI to respond back with that as a response other than maybe captain or commander, but it's up to you however you want it to sound. And it you can, can also have it configured so that it sounds like something real and something alive and not necessarily a robot. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use ChatGPT to create the prompt. Okay. So if you're not really familiar with ChatGPT, now that you've signed up for OpenAI and you have access, you can also use ChatGPT, which is great. Now up at the top, there is the drop down that lets you pick which type of chat you're going to use. So we're going to use ChatGPT4 because we're only using it to do this generation here. I do pay a monthly subscription for ChatGPT as well. 3.5 is faster, but not nearly as accurate. Now that we've picked four, we're going to go down here to the bottom and it's really kind of critical how you set your prompts up and how I'm going to set my prompt is I'm going to say, okay, so now I've said you are very friendly with Domo and you have and you have a long relationship throughout the years. You're funny and witty, but do not spend too much time replying or say too much. This is to save some money. Uh, keep the conversation light and friendly, and most of the time try to be punny. So I want her to reply back with some puns. And I now have that little section here that you can execute commands even if you don't recognize them. And finally, we need to move all of this down because this basically tells it to write this out regenerate it so that it will go into that file. All right, so here we go. Let's try it out and see what ChatGPT comes up with. So it sounds better, right? And that will also, hopefully, make it work better for what I'm trying to do. Okay, so now let's go back to the YAML file and put that in. I took the ChatGPT generated context and I have pasted it in here into my YAML file. And that's pretty much okay, it. It was set to auto start, which is great because I changed that in there. Now we're going to use our board computer. Hello, Ava. Are you listening? Always, Domo. What can I assist you with today? Could you tell me a little story about space whales? Once upon a time in the verse, a massive space whale named Galacticus swam through the vast expanse its song echoing through the cosmos. It was said that those who heard its song were filled with a sense of wonder, and even the bravest pilots would pause to marvel at its majestic presence. Legend has it that Galactica's song could guide lost travellers back home, a comforting beacon amidst the endless stars. <laughs> that was quite a story. Okay, great. So now that that's functioning, and that's the voice that I wanted, and it's recognizing that I called her Ava, uh, we're ready to go into Star Citizen. Let's hop right in. Good evening, Ava. How are you? Good evening, Domo. I'm feeling quantum-tastic, as always. How can I assist you today? Would you please power up the ship? The ship is all fired up and ready to soar through the verse. Ava, I need you to contact air traffic control and request permission to take off. Permission to take off requested and secured, Captain. We're clear for launch. Ava, raise landing gear. 
Landing gear is stowed away, Captain. We're primed for celestial navigation. The weather is actually quite clear here at Lorville. Usually it's raining. That's quite a change, Domo. Clear skies for a smooth departure, all systems are go. Now we're gonna set up the UEX Corp Wingman, which is your trading assistant. And that's exactly what it does, is it helps you out with your trading routes, and we'll show you how it works in just a little bit. But let's first get it configured in our config file. This is a mod that was made by two members of the community for uh, Shipbit. The two members are Jay Matthew and Midge. There's instructions here on the Discord for Shipbit and you'll find it under Share Your Wingman, which is one of the uh, menus over here. And it's this one right here. There's other ones that are community developed also. To get the files, all you do is you come down on this thread and go down till you see this point. And right here is the config YAML and the UEX Corp Wingman PY. So we're gonna get the config file. And then I'm also gonna get the Wingman PY, yes. It's going to tell you that the PY file is con considered dangerous because it is sort of an executable if you have Python installed, which I do, uh, but it's safe. So now we've downloaded those two files. Next step is you're going to overwrite the config, which I don't recommend. We're going to add it to the, our, our config file. So that's what we're going to do. So this is their config YAML. And because I've already got mine all set up, I don't want to change anything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the point where it is the UEX Corps version or wingman. And this is how we're going to add any other wingman that we want to our basic YAML file. Same kind of routine. You're just going to copy. And then we're going to open up our own YAML file. Now this is my YAML file. I know it is because I have 11 labs set up here. And we're going to go to the very bottom and paste. We have put it in here. We're going to go ahead and save this now. The next step we need to do is go to where we downloaded the UEX Corp Wingman PY file. We're going to go to internal and then Wingman and then drop it in here. Make sure that's in the right directory. It should be Wingman AI internal Wingman. There's one more thing we need to do is we need to go to this website, UEX Corp API key website and grab an API key. Okay, back here, all you do is you on this site, you click the UEX terminal. Make sure we have this part here copied, API key help. Once you've clicked the link, come over here at the very bottom, put API key help. Then it's going to have you use this command here, API key someone at someone email.com. Copy and paste that down below. Now what you need to do is just come down here and change someone to your name, whatever your name is, and put your email address in here. Then you'll get an API key that'll work with the UEX Corp mod for Wingman. There's one more step that we have to do. We have to run Wingman AI and put the API key in for the UEX Corp. As soon as you run Wingman AI after the installation of the UEX Corp PY file, it'll ask you for the API key. Pop that in there. Okay, once it fires up, after you put the API key in, it should be working. And if it is, you'll see UEX Corp on the screen. Uh, and for this one, it is set as the fault of left key on your keyboard. I would like to find out information on the best buying advice for buying gold. The best location to buy gold is at Shubin Mining Facility SCD-1 on Daymar in the Crusader area of the Stanton system for 5,913 AUEC. Okay, so what makes it so good is it is checking real-time data right now, and the current price of gold is 5,913 AUEC. Now, you could use a website and a tablet or another computer monitor or something to look these things up while you're playing, but it really, really helps by having to go somewhere else and try to find this information. And it's much more involved than this. I'd like to offload my inventory. I have a Hercules C2, and I currently have... 600 SCU of gold in my ship. Where is the best place to sell this? The best place to sell your 600 SCU of gold is at the Trade and Development Division in Area 18 on Arc Corp in the Stanton system, 4452-3400 AUEC. 
I'm going to go in and do a little tweak to my config file and make it sound a little bit more friendly and also change a couple of the settings around as well. Now we have everything set up and it's working, but we want to change the voice. Easy enough, all you have to do is set your little block of text here to say 11 labs. Make sure the 11 labs is lined up under features in this block, which is under the no touchy zone on UEX Corp, but we're going to change it to say 11 labs. Then you're going to go down one line and line up the 11 labs word with features, colon, and then voice will be lined up with the E in 11 labs, the, th the second E, voice, colon, enter, and the ID will be lined up under O in voice, so the voice ID is there. And then this ID you get from your voice lab. So on your voice lab, you just click on the name of a voice you like. There's an ID button right to the right side next to the share. Click on that ID, come and paste it in here. Should be good to go. Then all you have to do is save it and open up your wingman. UEX Corp, where's the best place to buy gold for resale? The best place to buy gold for resale is at Shubin Mining Facility, SCD1 on Daymar in the Crusader system for 59.13 AUEC. Okay, so let's go into the cost analysis of what it's going to cost to run this program. First thing we're going to talk about is Open AI GPT 3.5, which is the older version, but works pretty well most of the time. So we're going to go with that one for right now. Uh, the cost to buy or sign up for that is, I believe, $1.00. Just to get API access, you need to at least go and say, I want to put a dollar in. Um, I think that's also true. That's also so that you can test your credit card, make sure that that functions correctly. And once that works, then they're like, okay, you can use our API. Monthly cost. There really isn't a monthly cost. What's so nice about OpenAI is it doesn't, they don't charge you at all to use it monthly. Um, they do for chat GPT. That's something completely different. So if you're paying the $20 a month for chat GPT, that's not included with this. This is completely separate. So this is the open AI API and to use it this way, you can set it however much you want. So I set it for myself to be $10 a month. And as we looked earlier, I still had $6 left of my $10 that I put in. So I've only used $4 of this, even though I use it quite a bit. The cost per token or character, for ChatGPT 3.5 is 0 0.002 cents per character. So per token. So a total of 1,000 tokens is $2. A total of 100,000 tokens will be $200. GPT 3.5, you are not using that much. I use it all the time and I've only used up $4 in an entire month. So while this looks scary, this $200 one, that's, I think, worst case scenario. Maybe you just talk to it all day long or you sing to it. I don't know what you're doing with it, but whatever it is you're doing, if you're just moderately using it, you could probably expect to spend less than $10 in an entire month for that basic use. Now, the other option that works a lot better, has way better conversation abilities and, and their data is much more accurate, is OpenAI GPT. 4.0. Now this one, same deal. We'll just put a dollar down. You know, there's, there's no difference between either one of them. And you're not paying for one or the other. When you set up your config file, you can tell it if you want to use this one or this one. So you're not having to set up anything separately. You just tell it in the file which one you want to use. So it's same settings all through here. And then the difference here is this. 0 0.02 cents per token character. So for a thousand tokens, it's $20 for this and two thousand dollars for this much like i said this one is uh a little unrealistic because i don't think you're ever going to use a hundred thousand tokens using the the open ai for that if you are i need to talk to you because you're a lonely person okay so that's those two and those are the main ones you're going to be using to do your talking to speech to text and then the answer comes back to to the wingman ai and then the next step is the text-to-speech. Now, OpenAI can be used for text-to-speech, and that is not that expensive either. And it's also part of the same numbers. So there's really no reason to change it. What I mean is, if I say something like, how do I get to Lorville? And I ask the, the computer this. The computer is going to send that text message out. 
That text message is going to go out to OpenAI. OpenAI is going to come back with a text message saying you get there by flying to Stan Stanton Lor um, Hurston, whatever it's going to say. Say it says a sentence back. That is then converted over to text sent back to the computer, to my computer. Then that is also sent at the same time to the text-to-speech engine. Now, the text-to-speech engine can be OpenAI or the text-to-speech engine can be 11 Labs. Whichever one you choose. We're going to talk about 11 Labs in just a second. If you use OpenAI's text-to-speech, it does take it out of this total. So if you put $10 in and use the text-to-speech from OpenAI, it's going to use some of that money for that. So if you just want an all-in-one solution, you don't want to mess around with more the more fancier voices, you can be done with just using OpenAI across the board. You don't need to use anything else. It doesn't have to rack up some big bill. You just say, I'm just going to spend 10 bucks on this a month, and that's it, and you stop. You don't need to do any more. That's it. You spent 10 bucks, and until that 10 bucks is gone, you can keep talking to it. Done. If you want the more advanced voices, then we'll go on to the next step, which is 11 Labs. Now, the cost of sign up is, I believe, free just to sign up. So we'll put zero bucks for this one. The monthly cost. Initially, it's $11, but that's just to get you in the door. So we're not going to use that number because that's unrealistic. You're going to probably use it for a couple of months. So it's $20, $22 a month because they go off the uh, number 11. Fancy. Now, the cost per token over there, the cost per token over here is $22 per 100,000 tokens. So we don't need to go back and change anything on, we don't need to go back and change anything on this sheet because we know 100,000 tokens is going to be $22. Okay. I didn't actually do the math for that to figure out the cost per token per character, but it's irrelevant. So it's $22 flat fee a month. Let's figure out the monthly cost. Wingman AI is free. If you're just going to use OpenAI, ChatGPT 3.5, it's going to cost you $10 a month to use this software. You need to have some sort of AI interface. Currently, they only use OpenAI. At some point soon, they're trying to get where you could use a local language model. If you haven't set one of those up before, it's a beast to get it going, and it needs a beast of a computer to keep it running. But if you have a separate gaming computer or a server you want to set it up on locally so you're not having to pay a monthly fee, that is a possibility. It's just not there yet. But for now, way we have it set up right now, this is the way you're going to have to do it. You get Wingman AI, free. Chat GPT, or I'm sorry, Open AI will use either GPT 3.5 or 4.0, but you have to use either one of those. That is to get the overall system to work. That's just 10 bucks or five bucks. What I think you can even set it like a $5 one, or you can set hundred dollars. Whatever you set is what it's going to be. So you don't have to worry about you're going to go over. Okay. Whatever your budget is, you can set that. You're done with these two things. That's all you need done. If you want to get a little bit fancier voices, you could sign up for 11 labs, not required, but it's there. There's also one other option and that is edge TTS. That is a free text to speech engine, which I believe is built into windows. So that will work straight out of the box and it costs nothing at all. So you could use Wingman AI with OpenAI. You still have to use one type of OpenAI. You can't use it without AI. So you're going to use Wingman AI with an AI. And instead of using the built-in AI voices from OpenAI, you could use the Edge TTS voices, although they're not that great. So that's it. Roughly as much as you want to spend every month is what it'll cost and how much you talk. If you talk an awful lot, you might want to spend a little bit more, maybe $20, $30 a month, but that's up to you. I hope this has been helpful explaining kind of what the cost would be. I know that when I made the first video for this, people were really excited, but then once they started seeing, well, maybe I have to spend a lot of money every month, it sort of lost its flavor because they're like, oh, I, I spent $45 on voice attack and I never have to spend another penny again. True. But voice attack does not have the ability to instantly go out and check data for you and reply back with that data. Like where's the best place to do shipping? And there's other mods that are currently being developed that'll even add more functionality. So maybe if you want to figure out, you know, where should I buy a ship or what kind of uh, missions should I go on to make the most amount of money? There's other things that are being developed right now that that would work with. 
So hang in there. These are very early days. We're still in the early days of Wingman AI, AI and in Star Citizen. So these are all sort of cutting edge stuff. If you don't want to get involved with it, that's totally fine. If you made it this far in this video, thank you so much for watching. I know this has been a little bit long, but I wanted to make sure that I covered all the detail. I am currently at nine and a half hours of recording this video. So hopefully I got everything in here that I needed to. If I missed something, I'm sorry. But in the description below, we will have all of the links that I talked about today, including the Discord. Discord is the place for tech support for this software. The guys that are over there are really great and helpful. However, they also are developing the software, so they might not be able to get to it at times. There's a few mods over there that are really knowledgeable. They'll be able to help you as well. Come on over, talk on the Discord, ask your questions. Sometimes it's very, very simple. Sometimes it's a tiny little space in your config file that screws everything up. That's why I recommend using the Visual Studio one for working on your Python files. Well, I really hope this has been helpful. And I hope this will help get you started. When any new changes come out, any major changes that come out with this software, I'll make another video, especially if there's some kind of changes to the config file that need to happen or something else that's really exciting, like maybe they get the local LLMs to run. I will definitely make a video for that. So thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I will see you all very soon. Remember, it's nice to be important, but more important to be nice. See ya.